Okay, lesson 2.4 is on complex numbers. So what's a complex number? Well, it includes a real part and an imaginary part. So if we said 3 plus 2i, this is a complex number. The 3 is the real part, and the 2i is the imaginary. So how... How do you deal with this? Well, what's I? Well, let's go back and review what is I. So I is equal to the square root of a negative 1. So I squared is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which is negative 1. I cubed would be I times I squared. So that is a negative square root of negative 1. I to the fourth power would be i squared times i squared, so that's just equal to 1. Now we could continue this, i to the fifth, so this is i to the fourth times i to the first, and it just starts repeating, i to the fourth is 1, and so i to the fifth is the same as i to the first, the square root of negative 1. So on and so forth, i to the sixth, is going to be like i squared, that's negative 1. Okay, what if you have i to the 59th power? Well, this repeats every fourth time, so i to the 60th would be like i to the 4th, which is 1, and 1 less than that would be i to the 3rd, so i to the 59th is the same as i cubed, which is negative square root of negative 1. Okay, so that's enough review of what i is equal to. Let's do some arithmetic using complex numbers. So let's say we have 3 plus 4i, and we're going to add 2 minus 3i. 2 minus 3i. Well, you add the real parts, and you add the imaginary parts. So the real parts are 3 and 2, so that's 5. Imaginary parts, 4i minus 3i is 1i, so it's just plus i. Now let's do a negative. So 3 plus 4i minus 2 minus 3i. Okay, same thing. It's the real parts minus the real parts, and imaginary minus imaginary. So we have 3 minus 2, that's 1. And we have a 4i minus a minus 3i is plus 7i. Now what about multiplication? Okay, 3 plus 4i times 2 minus 3i. So this, you're just going to foil it like you would regular numbers. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times a minus 3i is a minus 9i. 4i four time, four times 2 is a plus 8i. And a 4i times a negative 3i is a negative 12i squared. This is the part where a lot of students will forget to put the i squared in there. So now we're going to simplify this. Well, a negative 12i squared, okay, so i squared we know is a negative 1, so a negative 12 times a negative 1 is going, this is going to be a plus 12. And we combine negative 9i plus 8i, so that's a negative i, and then here we have a 6. So we have a 6 plus 12 minus i, so that turns out to be 6 and 12 is 18 minus i, and that's the answer. Put a box around it. Okay, so now let's do a division problem. So let's do 3 plus 4i divided by 2 minus 3i, 2 minus 3i. So the way you solve a complex number divided by a complex number, you look at the denominator and you multiply top and bottom by its conjugate. So the conjugate of 
2 minus 3i is 2 plus 3i. So you just change the sign. So you multiply top and bottom by 2 plus 3i. You don't have to put parentheses around. Uh, I just kind of do it by habit, but it doesn't really need to have a parentheses. So let's multiply the numerators. We're going to FOIL it. So 3 times 2, 6. 3 times 3i is plus 9i. 4i times 2 is 8i. 4i times 3i is a plus 12i squared. Okay, that takes care of the numerator. Denominator, when you multiply conjugates, I like to say the oys go away, which is the outside and inside. So all you're doing is multiplying the first and the last because the insides will cancel each other out. So 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 3i times a positive 3i is a negative 9i squared. So now we're going to simplify the numerator. So you see where we have an i squared, a 12i squared. i squared is a negative 1, so this is going to be a negative 12. And so we have a 6 plus a negative 12 gives us a negative 6. Then we add the uh, imaginary terms. And we have 9i and 8i is plus 17i. So that's the numerator. And the denominator, again, we have an i squared term. So i squared is negative 1, so negative 1 times negative 9 is a positive 9, so 4 plus 9 is 13. Now, sometimes they'll, you can leave the problem like this, but it's better to split up the fraction. That way you have a real term and a, an imaginary term. So splitting up the fractions, we're going to have a negative 6 over 13 plus 17i over 13. And this is a better way to leave the answer. Okay, you remember from Algebra 2, if you had the square root of a negative 5, so the answer is not going to be a real number. You can't do that in real number, but it's you convert it to an imagine, imaginary number. It's going to be i square root of 5. And so that's how you convert radicals to um, get rid of the negative sign from under the radical. And so what if you had a problem square root of negative 5 times the square root of negative 8. Well, square root of negative, we're going to rewrite it. So this is i square root of 5. Sometimes books will write it as the square root of 5 times i. I don't like that so much because you don't know if the i is inside the radical or not. So I just prefer to put the i in front of the radical. So this is i square root of 5 times i square root of 8. So then this just becomes the i times i is i squared. Square root of 8, 5 times square root of 8, square root of 40. And then we're going to simplify. The i squared is negative. So it's going to be negative. i squared is negative 1, so it's just negative. And then we're going to simplify the square root of 40. So it's the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. So the square root of 4 is 2, so it's negative 2 square root of 10, and that would be the simplified answer, which is what you're going to want to do. Um, you want to simplify these to the most simplest terms. Okay, the next uh, example is on complex solutions of quadratic equations. And so here we have a quadratic equation, 3x squared minus 3x plus 7 equals 0. And we want to find, or well, solve for x. So typically what you would do is look at this equation, see if you can factor it. And quickly you'll see, well, this isn't factorable, so we're going to solve for x by using quadratic equation. So x is equal to um, minus b, we'll write the equation first, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So then we'll just fill it in. Minus b is a minus and minus 3, so it's 3. Plus or minus the square root b squared is 9 minus 4 times a, which is a is 3 times 
C, which is 7, all over 2A. So that's going to be 2 times 3 is 6. So simplify inside the radical. 3 plus or minus the square root. Well, so 4 times 3 is 12, times 7 is 84. 9 minus 84 is a negative 75 over 6. So right away we can tell, well, this is a complex number. So we're going to put it in two parts, a real part and an imaginary part. So we'll split it up. So 3 over 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 75 over 6. So 3 6 is 1 half, plus or minus. Now we have a negative 75 in the radical, so it's going to be i square root of 75 over 6. And finally, we want to take care of that square root of 75. Well, we know that that's the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. So 1 half plus or minus. So the square root of 25, that's 5. And I'm going to put that in front of the i. So it's going to be 5i. And what's left is the square root of 3 all over 6. So here you have your real part. Here you have your imaginary part. There's two answers, as you would expect from a quadratic. It's 1 half plus the imaginary part and 1 half minus the imaginary part. So that does it for... 2.4, we'll have two days worth of homework for 2.4.